Hello, everyone. Welcome to this month's Dobry University session for Financial Edge on Managing User Accounts. We're so glad you're joining us today. If you have any questions during today's session, please feel free to use the chat feature located at the bottom of your screen. We will be sure to go over your questions at the end of the session. If we do run out of time, we will address these questions back to you in an email. Joining us today is Director of Application Services, Chuck Hayes. Chuck, I'll turn the presentation over to you. Thank you, Cindy, and welcome everyone. It's great to be with you today for our Zogrio University session. We often get a lot of questions around, okay, exactly what's going on with all these user accounts? I have a new user. How do I make sure that the FE NXT web view login is working and when they go into the database view? So in this session, I want to help sort it all out and uh, walk through what the different components uh, include. Um, part of it depends on your particular setup that BlackBot has arranged for your account and your instance of FE NXT. So we'll be taking a look. Um, I created screenshots for everything because it's helpful when we've got multiple different uh, you know, websites and applications all at once. So I think it'll make it just a little bit easier for us. So let's kind of dive into what we're trying to accomplish today. So we want to look at how do you add and invite new users to your organization? So that's the initial connection that happens. And then once that's in place, how can you link those new BlackBot ID users to your FE NXT database users. Um, so there's actually a, a, an additional step there. Now, interestingly enough, in the last few months, BlackBot has modified the process so that you also have an option within FE NXT to combine these two steps into one. I'm going to show you the separate components just to make sure you're aware of all the different moving parts. Um, but you can also combine into two steps. Um, and we'll go through the process of well, what does an invitation mean and what does it look like for the end user, especially if they're brand new to all of this, you know, what exactly do they have to do? And a couple tips that I'm going to give you about just, you know, walking them through what to expect. And then in some cases, some of you with your FE NXT environment, as it's called, uh, it's in uh, what's called a hosting environment. So you actually have different logins depending on the web view versus the database view. Some customers will go right into database view. They never log in again. Others go through this extra step. Um, so we'll also take a look at that and what are those user IDs and how does it all work together. So let's dive in. First of all, your organization has an account with Blackboard. And you can go to the blackbot.com website and sign in. It's actually signin.blackbot.com. This is an example of Zobrio's account with Blackbot. And once you're in there, if you are set up as an admin, and that's an important designation, so you know at least one person in your organization is the admin. Uh, if you are the admin, then you'll be able to access the menu you just see across the top. So you'll be able to select the admin page. And then um, there's a way in which you can look at users and admins. So let's talk about what exactly are these users. So these are the users that are connected to your organization in general. Uh, for example, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're connected to FE NXT. There might be other reasons why you've connected them. Uh, sometimes it has to do with other products you might have with BlackBot or subscription services or that type of thing. So in this example, I hid the names of actual users on our account, but you'll see that in the grid at the bottom, we'll have the name of the user, and that's just you know first and last name, and then the user's email address. So what you'll be seeing here is what's referred to as their Blackboard ID. So let me just take a moment and talk about that. So anyone can go to blackbot.com and set up a Blackboard ID. You don't necessarily have to be connected to an organization to do that, although normally that is the case. And so the BlackBot ID is considered uh, attached to the person, not to the organization. So for example, if I worked for your organization and I had a BlackBot ID and you had connected me, like examples you're seeing here, um, if I left your organization, I still get to keep my BlackBot ID. You might make me inactive with your organization, but I can still use that BlackBot ID and potentially connect it to a different organization. 
Um, or in the case of Zobrio, we are the uh, reseller and support for lots and lots of FE NXT customers. So I could access, you know, the admin pages for all of those customers as well. And so my black body chunks is connected with Zobrio and with some of these customers as well. So the black body ID is kind of independent. And then what this page will show you is anyone that's connected to your organization. And you'll see there's a status of active. Now that status might change depending on what's happening. So let's talk about the, the concept of, well, what if we have a new employee? Well, you'll notice on this particular screenshot on the left-hand side, there's a blue add user button. And that button allows you, I just realized I need to close something here. That button allows you to start the process of creating a new user. And um, we'll take a look at what exactly that means. But before I go to that, that next slide, um, you use that process to create the new user and then connect them to your organization. And then back to this list. So the status might change to invitation sent. And then once they accept it, then they become active. But I will mention here, although it's not highlighted in the slide, you can use those three little dots to the left of the username and there's a flyout menu and you'll be able to make the person inactive. So that basically means they can no longer access your organization uh, if they should leave, say. But let's say you wanna go down the road of creating a, um, a new user. And again, I realized I should have closed something here. Uh, you wanna create a new user. So you go ahead and click that add user button. You'll get a pop-up that's pictured here. And I've highlighted two important pieces in red. So in the, the area labeled as B, you'll type in the name of the person, first and last name, and then type in their email. Now, usually the email will be the work address, but what we're looking for is the email that either they're already using for their Blackboard ID or that they will use to create a Blackboard ID. And then you'll click the send invite button. So it really is that easy to do. Add user, type in a little bit of information, send an invite. So what happens next is the person will receive an email from Blackboard and then there's a process that they need to follow. So let's talk about that and the process because sometimes that process can get a little confusing for folks. Let's take a look. So first of all on the left you'll see an example of an email invitation. Now, what you'll notice is it simply says you've been invited. It doesn't say uh, the name of your organization. It, there will be the person who sent it in the upper left corner. I kind of masked that out, but it will have uh, the email address of the admin at your organization who is the person who initiated this process. Uh, but it won't say, hey, it's from your organization's name. It'll just say, hey, you've been invited to Blackbot. So you want to give people a heads up that this is coming. And you'll notice there's a big blue button in the middle that says accept invitation. So what happens is they click that link, accept invitation, and then they're taken to a page, a website page, and it'll basically look like the little, the, the rectangle on the right, this is Blackboard ID. It'll be a big white page with that in the middle. And the part that gets confusing for folks without you telling you, it's important to tell them ahead of time, but the part gets a little confusing is, Oh, okay, so do I just put in my work sign in that I use on my computer and people start doing that and it says, you know, user not found and all that kind of stuff. So you want to let them know ahead of time that they want to go down to what I've labeled as C, need an account, sign up. So I would expect that you would know whether or not the person you're inviting has already had a Blackboard ID with another organization. So assuming they don't, you want to just let them know you'll be getting an invitation email and it's important when you get there that you sign up. Don't try to log in because you haven't created an account yet. So they will go ahead and use the sign up and we'll look at you know, what exactly that involves in just a moment here. But in addition to that issue, let's just uh, talk about the Blackboard ID uh, in general. This is what everyone will eventually use to log in to get to the web view of that BNXP or that admin page we were just looking at. And I just wanted to make a comment that there is an option that I've labeled as B um, that you can reset your password. So the user has control over resetting their Blackboard ID password and they will get a confirmation email. And uh, as a result of that confirmation, then they'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to pick a new password, they'll get a confirmation, et cetera, and then 
that completes the process. So they, you know, if you do have someone who says, hey, I can't log in with my BlackBot ID mentioned, well, there is a forget password link, you can reset it. Uh, you won't be able to reset the password for them. That's a security feature. So even if you're on the admin page, you can't do that. All right, so the invitation has gone out. The person has gone ahead and they've clicked that sign up link. So what happens next? So I've pictured on the left what you just saw. Um, but if they do the, the sign up link, then what I've labeled as D is an example of the body of an email that they'll receive. So they'll receive a confirmation email. Now I didn't show all the input boxes for the BlackBot ideas, basically name and you know, a few other things like that. It's just very basic information. Um, but they'll fill that in and then the system will tell them, oh, we're gonna send you a confirmation email, please reply to that email. So they'll go ahead and get the confirm email that's pictured in letter D here. And then what they need to do, and this is the part that gets a little confusing to folks, most people will think when they confirm that email, that they're done and they finish the sign up, I mean, excuse me, the invitation that they originally received, and that's not the case. So at that point, once they do the confirm, all they've really done is created a BlackBot ID. And when they click that con confirm email, they'll be taken back to blackbot.com, they'll be logged in, and all they will see is their profile page. And they will think, I don't see FENXT. And nothing's going to tell them, hey, we know you started this with an invitation, but you need to go back and redo the invitation. So what I recommend is that you tell folks, okay, you're going to do two things. You're going to sign up, create that BlackBot ID, confirm the email. Then you're going to close your browser, log off, close your browser, and start over again accepting the invitation. So that way, when they do the process again with the accept invitation, They'll use their new credentials for the BlackBot ID on the left, boxes, you know, the A boxes. Then when they sign in, as a result of clicking the invitation a second time, they'll see the section that's pictured with letter E on the right. They'll see a pop-up page, a brand new page, and it'll be all white except for this gray area. And it will say, you've been invited to the BlackBot Solutions for, and your organization name will appear in that white space where the red text is. And then you're currently signed in as, and it'll show their BlackBot ID name, their email address, if you will. That's the final clue, if you will, that they've properly completed, or not completed, but they've properly accessed the last step in accepting the invitation. So then they'll click use this idea, ID, and now they're finished. At that point, they should end up having an option when they log into blackbot.com or sign on, as it's called here. Um, in the upper left corner, that stacked menu that was visible before, they'll have an option to go to FENXT. Okay, so like I said earlier, it's important to give folks a heads up. Here's what's going to happen. I've worked with a lot of customers, including some recently where, you know, it said, well, the, you know, the person couldn't log in, they thought they did. I said, well, I think maybe they didn't finish everything. So we actually walk back through with them and everything that's usually exactly what's going on. So then uh, once, once that's all said and done, then the user is officially connected with a BlackBot ID to your organization. Well, let's go to the next step. So now we know that we wanted this to happen. But what about the fact that we're trying to connect this person to FENXT? So now we're back to your responsibilities as the admin. And in this example, what's happened is, and this has only happened in the last few months, Blackboard has moved all of the procedures for the FENXT connection into the FENXT environment. Previously, it was on that admin page that I showed you before. Not so anymore. So you'll log in to FENXT like you're used to, and there'll be a menu across the top, and one of them that I've pictured here, I'm not showing the entire menu, just part of it, but the control panel menu will have an option for security. And security is where you'll see a page similar to what I showed you for the regular admin page that lists users. The difference is that that page also shows uh, their connection to a specific 
uh, FE NXT user in the database. So to follow the process, you'll simply see this list of folks and then to the left of the name, so you'll see under manage roles on the left, the name is actually Financial Edge. So that's the name we use for our, uh, our official Zobrio Blackbot ID with Blackbot. Uh, so it could have just said Chuck Hayes or something like that. But anyway, you'll see the username and you'll click that little three dot menu, the ellipsis, and you'll have a fly out that says manage roles. So you just have to remember, I'm managing the role. That's the methodology. That's the functionality. That's the name you use to connect someone with a BlackBot ID that's linked to your organization to a specific user account in the database, in the FE NXT database. So you'll see this manage roles, you'll get a, a pop-up and one of the sections on the pop-up, lower right, will mention the security groups tile that you see where it says link to existing user or create a new user. Now, I strongly encourage you to link to an existing user. So for this session, we assume that you know how to create a user in the database view of FE. Um, and that's something maybe for another session, but we assume you know how to do that. And so normally I would recommend going into database view, create the user first, make sure you're comfortable with the security groups and everything else, because you might want to copy a few things, et cetera. Um, this create new user will work. However, it doesn't set up the user options. There's a number of things that it does not do. So I recommend doing it in database view and then come back to where I was talking about in the web view. And then you can do link to an existing user and then you'll see the third screenshot on the right where you see security groups with a gray background. It's been checked in the upper right and you'll see the box will change and say link to existing user. So you'll just click inside that input box and start typing the username that's in the database. And it might be abbreviated or something like that. And then you'll start to see a drop down list of the users and you just select the right one. Okay. So you are basically linking the Blackboard ID user to a specific user account in the database. And once that's completed, then when the folks um, uh, log into BlackBot ID, then they'll truly be able to access FE NXT. I think I slightly misspoke earlier. This step has to be completed before they'll see FE NXT as a menu option. Now I will say that um, this picture I have on the left under manage roles and you see the name Financial Edge. So what BlackBot has also done is they've combined into this manage roles option the ability to also send an invitation. So if you were to click add new user, which I didn't picture here, but it's available on the same page, then you'll have the pop-up I showed you earlier about name and email. And then you'll choose the security group. And then you'll have a button that says send invite. So you can actually combine the two steps that we've looked at into one. I separated them for this discussion just to help, um, help you understand the impl impl implications and what the choices are, but you can combine them here. So once you've completed this process, then the user can access the web view for FE NXT. Um, if they've already been invited and accepted the invitation to your, your organization, they won't get another invitation. They just go in and they can, they can access FE NXT. If you're using this to do everything at once, then they'll do all the other steps previously, then they can access FENXT. So that brings us to our last topic. So what if you also have a second login for database view? It's referred to as the hosting login. So customers who have Financial Edge NXT, FENXT, um, are in one of two different types of environments. And it all kind of depends on your overall products with BlackBot. Some customers are in what's called the Azure environment, which means that when they switch to database view, and I'm assuming you know what that means for the purpose of this session, but when they switch to database view, they just go right in and database view opens up and they're done and they can just do whatever they want. Well, in that case, they are not in what's called the hosting environment. They have one login and they can get into any view and they just switch back and forth. Other folks are in what's called hosting. So it was a previous setup that BlackBot used when certain types of applications were involved. So when you are in the hosting environment, when you click to go to database view, you are sent to a separate web page and you have a separate login. So that's your clue. 
Am I in hosting? Yeah, I have a separate login to get to database view. I have the web view, and then I log in with different credentials to go to the hosting page, and then I access the FE icon. So if that's your setup, then in order for the folks who you just added to the web view of NXT, in order for them to see what's called the database view, then you have to create an additional user ID for them called the hosting login. And you have to be an administrator on the hosting page. And if you are, you'll see a link that's pictured with the letter A, user admin administration, you'll see a, an icon for that. And when you click that icon, you'll get a pop-up box. Um, an application will run. It's actually a, a server you know, user setup. And it's pictured here with the letter B. So this will list the different users. So in this example, I'm showing you a portion of the Zobrio hosting account. You'll see that there are some groups listed. It says security group, like FE users and FE admin. And then you'll see my name, you know, uh, C. Hayes, and there's a bunch of numbers in front of that. What's that? That's the site ID. So every Blackwell customer has a site ID. And the reason why we recommend using the site ID and then the initials or whatever is because this is actually what's called a shared server. So there are lots of people with logins on this server. Of course, your data is secure and separated. But you want to use the site ID because then no one else is going to use your site ID. So we've got the site ID and the name. And in order to create a new user, you simply right click anywhere in that grid. That's letter C. You'll see a context menu with new and user. And then you'll get some pop-up boxes to fill in what's essentially shown here with the name and that kind of thing. So I just use the login name with the site ID uh, and the, the initials, because that's what you see back on letter B. So you'll fill in that account. Um, you'll be asked to put in a password. I didn't show all those input boxes, but you'll go ahead and fill in those credentials and the password and that kind of thing. And then um, the user account will be created and it'll be listed back on letter B. So it's basically a, a one step process just to create the account. Then you need to go back in again to go ahead and connect them to the user group, the FE user group. So what you'll do is you go back in again and you'll now see their name listed. You'll open up the name, just double click. You'll like the C Hayes example, you can double click. And that's what I'm showing here. And there'll be a tab called member of, and it'll be blank to begin with. Now, in this case, I'm an admin for Zobrio, um, but what you'll probably want to do is select FE users normally. So on that member of, there's a button that will say add that you see highlighted with the red box on the left. When you click the add button, you'll get this select groups pop up. And you simply type in your site ID on this left-hand side input box below the enter the object names to select. Click check names and you'll get a pop up that you see on the right of matching names. And what you're expecting to see is the FE groups for FE admin, FE secure, and FE users. Those are created by Blackboard. And they always use your site ID, a hyphen, and the language you see here. So those, that's, that's fixed. That's what always happens with, with these. Uh, we are also connected to the Razor's Edge. So that's why you see Ari. But normally, you'll select FE users. So you'll just double click on FE users and click OK. And then now that person will be connected to the FE user group. That's really the last step. And so once you do that, then when the person logs into the hosting page to access database view, they will see a, an icon for FE. They click the FE icon and then database view will launch. Okay, so you gotta set up that hosting user. Now there's potentially one more step to make their life a little bit easier because basically we've set up the hosting login they click, they're taken to, uh, they click the FE icon, database view starts to open up, but it's going to give them a splash screen and expect them to do a third login. And this is the traditional database login. So the thing you might have used to have done on your server, for example. Um, so the issue there is that uh, sometimes, you know, you basically have a third login and people might have forgotten those credentials or uh, whatever might be going on there. So there is a way to basically eliminate the need for the third login directly to the database. And what you can do is synchronize the user inside the FE database view with the hosting account. So it's kind of cool. 
So one more slide here, and we'll take a look at that. So you would go into the database view. So obviously, you have to already have access. So you'll go into database view. You'll go to administration and security. I'm assuming you know how to do that. You'll open up the user account. And on the right-hand side of the first tab, you will see this little box that's pictured here that says use Windows authentication. Now, some of you who migrated from an on-premises instance of Financial Edge to FENXT may have already been using Windows authentication on your organization's servers. This is a similar concept. Um, so you would check the box for Windows authentication, and then you use the syntax that's, that's mentioned above that screenshot. So you simply use the word, the phrase blackboard host, it doesn't have to be all caps, but that's the way it actually is returned, a backslash, and then the hosting username. So you may recall from the previous slide, my username was 29789CHAYS. So you just put in blackboard host backslash the username, and then uh, the system will allow you to save the user with Windows authentication. Now, if you type something incorrectly, it'll give you a a very cryptic message. I think it says SID not found or something like that. Um, it's actually a Windows Server terminology for the security ID. Uh, but at any rate, if you use that syntax with the correct username, then, and you can save the user in the database view, then what happens is, so if Chuck goes to the hosting page and Chuck logs in and clicks the FE icon, I'll go right into database view, no more logins, it basically gets me down to two logins. I've got the login for FENXT web view, and I've got the login for database view in the hosting. So that concludes our topics for today. Again, we wanted to take a look at, you know, what's that web view blackboard ID account all about? How do I create one of those for new people? You basically invite them and let them create it. How do I link that to someone in you know, our database user in web view? We talked about that. And then lastly, we looked at for those of you that do have the additional hosting login, how do you go ahead and create a user in hosting? and then link that user into the database. So it's two types of linking, the web view links into the database and the hosting links to the database. And then the end user really only needs to have two different logins, the web view login and the database view login. So Cindy, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks everyone for joining us at Zebra University. Uh, there were no questions today. In the meantime, please feel forward to reach out to us at marketing.com, marketing at zebra.com if you have any, any further questions. A recording of this session will be available on our website within the next couple of weeks. We hope to see you again for next month's Zebra University session. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>